G'day guys and thank you for joining. Today we're going to test out one of Fuji's best lenses, the 16mm 1.4. We know it's razor sharp but how good is it in low light photography? Tonight we're going to do some star photography to test out one of Fuji's best lenses, so stick around. Bloody hell, it's good to see your smiling faces, guys. That's right, I am here in Egypt. We spent the last four days in Cairo. What a bloody crazy hustling and bustling city Cairo is. The noise, the smells, everything in between, but my God, the history and the sights, well worth it. Not my type of place, but it was somewhere that I really wanted to visit. I went to the pyramids, the museum, and I'm really bloody glad I took them off my list. But now we're gonna scoot on five hour drive to get to a place called the White Desert. Don't have to explain it to you because you know what white means, you know what desert means. Put them together, it's gonna to be a white desert. It's one place I really wanted to come here and photograph. But mainly tonight I wanna to test out this 16mm 1.4. I've heard it's bad in low light photography for the comma in the stars in the top left hand, top right hand corner. But I said a couple of weeks ago, minimalist is my way that I want to go forward. So this bad boy can focus, it's razor sharp, sorry focus closely, it's razor sharp, film 1.4, but how good is it in low light? We're about to find out. I've got the next month here in Egypt, it's not a pure photography based trip, but there are one or two locations that I definitely want to take you guys on. So sit down, bloody buckle up, it's going to be an absolutely epic ride here in Egypt. Stick around. So we have finally made it to the white desert where we wanted to be at after a few little mishaps along the way which I'll explain all along in a second. But we've just pulled off off of the main road now and just looking at our first glimpse of it. Now the blogs that I have read, it does say you get much better as we go on. So the plan is now to head on further to look at a mushroom place. I believe the made of chalk, I haven't actually gone up to it yet. Made of chalk, get a sunset photo organize all this, get some footage, and then shoot some astrophotography at this beautiful place. It's absolutely no clouds whatsoever right now, so it should be, should be absolutely perfect here. In an absolutely incredible location, I've traveled one and a half thousand kilometers to come and photograph here in Egypt. Okay, so I've made it to where I want to be at, at the White Desert, the new White Desert. And this is the little bit of a problem I've got that I'm trying to face with going with tours. Obviously, it's a great idea to save money and get to places that you really can't get to by yourself. The problem is, is you're stuck with time with those people and we've got like five or ten minutes to shoot a sunset image. And I'm running around like a mad chook looking for compositions that I want to try and shoot because I'm in a whole new place and I don't really know what I want to shoot. But the main objective I'm here for is to shoot the star photography. So I've got plenty of time to find out where to shoot that, but there's just endless compositions and not enough time. So I'm gonna put the camera down now and go and have a look if I can find something around this beautiful place. Okay, so I stated before that we're on a tour. What are we doing? Where are we? All this sort of jazz. We're in the white desert. We booked a three day tour, two night tour. It's got its pros and its cons, obviously, as any tour does. But as a landscape photographer, it's really bloody difficult. You want light and you want time. I didn't get any of those tonight. So on a tour, why we book a tour, it saves us money. We're on a budget. We want to come to Egypt and do things as cheap as possible, but to do as many things as we possibly can. Then there's the other side of being a traveler, a landscape photographer. You want time to find compositions and you want light. 
Now you can only get the right light if you have the time to find the compositions, to get the correct place, the correct foreground, every element down to get the light with the composition. I had neither of them tonight, which is super frustrating. That's the massive con of being a photographer on a tour, but the pro is it brings the budget down. So I was basically running around like a mad chalk trying to find things, find compositions that just didn't work. But a huge positive about tonight is it's dark obviously right now, it's the star photography. And that's what I mainly come here for because I knew I'd have the time on my hand just to walk around and find those compositions. But before that, all about two or three hours ago, we've already had some dinner, already done some crazy footage of the sunset, which was absolutely beautiful. The light really took off, but as I said, didn't have time or anything to get the composition down pack. So I've got some awesome B-Rocks, wanted to do a short film from this location and also in Egypt and got some images. I'm not sure what they're going to turn out like right now. I was running around a little bit, but I'm going to show you the little bit of a B-Roll segment and some images before I come back and take you through this image that I want to capture here. So enjoy this segment and these one or possibly two images from the white desert here in Egypt. Radio. So you can see we had some pretty epic light here in the white desert, which is, you know, kind of disappointing, but you got to roll the punches as a landscape photographer, especially when you travel. Traveling isn't about going to location, just getting epic shots all the time. I have probably 75% of failure, 25% of success. Unfortunately, I show most of my success on this channel and through my website because no one really cares about the disappointment of photography. So that's just how it is. Like I said, got some epic B-roll. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I am filming all that on the X-H1 because I am testing that out all the way through this trip. So far I'm enjoying it, but I am missing the face detection uh, for focusing. But I'll talk about that in a completely separate vlog. Now I want to test out this. A couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I've done a Samyang 12mm F2 manual focus comparing to this bad boy lens. It's known as probably Fuji's best and sharpest lens, the 16 1.4. Its biggest downfall that I've read is astrophotography, which is what I want to test it out for tonight. It has really bad comet in the, basically both top corners, and it's just something I want to work out, because I said in that vlog that I really want to reduce my photography kit as much as possible. Become a minimalist, don't have so much gear, and focus on just what you're using and use it to how you actually want to shoot your images. That's what I'm out here doing tonight. I'm actually doing two things tonight, shooting astro work and sussing out some locations for next week's vlog for you guys, but tomorrow morning for me at sunrise to shoot this place. I want to try and get one really beautiful image from this place. But now I'm going to test out this lens. I've got a really cool peak right in front of me. You can't really see it, but it's like almost a dragon's head coming out. You'll see it in the image. But I'm going to shoot at f1.4, 13 seconds, and I'm shooting between ISO uh, 1600 all the way to 3200 because the Fuji X-T3 does suffer from quite a bit of noise. I found 3200 to be the best, the highest ISO that I can shoot at with this sort of stuff. So I actually have got someone to walk up with a torch and I've focused on that and then just double check my focusing with that also. But I've already done some base shots already. I can tell straight away at 1.4. It's crazy good, 24 mil and full frame equivalent. Let's in so much light, incredible amount of light, but it does suffer from that comma, which is the biggest downfall about this lens. But I'm gonna bump up to f2.8 to see if it gets away 
from that sort of really bad combo in the corners at all or if it just sticks around. Compositionally wise, 24mm and full frame equivalent, I've already said. The dragon's head, I'm hoping to get the Milky Way coming sort of straight out of its head. So now I'm going to muck around some things in camera and then get back to you guys to see if I can get around that combo issue or if this is the biggest downfall about the perfect Fuji lens. Okay, so just looking through the LCD, I went through basically and done a couple of images at uh, 1.4, ISO 1600, 3200, F2, because I'm matching the Samyang, obviously 12mm, 16mm, and straight, looking on the back of the camera, it looks super good. Like straight out of camera, it looks absolutely incredible. But when you zoom up closer, especially, like, I just went over there before actually and took an image. In the center of the image, it's very, very, very good in most places, especially around the Milky Way. But as soon as the top right and top left, it's definitely an issue. But for me still, I said on the last vlog about the Samyang and this uh, Fuji film, it has to do multiple things for me, a lens, a camera, accessories, whatever it is. And for this, it can film in low light. All that B-roll you've seen at sunset, the slow motion was all filmed on this. It can shoot macro up to 10 centimeters. It can autofocus. I autofocus this at night. There's so many more advantages about this lens than disadvantages about the Samyang. Yes, you can still film, but it's manual focus. Me, I love running gun stuff. I want that autofocus because the type of travel I do, I haven't got time to jump in and out of focusing. So this little downfall, I can happily, for the 10 to 15, 20 images I shoot for astrophotography, I'd be happy to go into post-production and fix this sort of little minor issue. I know it's not perfect. I know this has got a lot of work to do on the lens as well. But for me, I don't shoot a lot of astro. I would love to learn, I'd love to get into it more. But looking at these images, that's all I need out of a camera and a lens. So for me, I'm happy to sell the Samyang and keep this lens. The one downfall does not outweigh all the advantages of this camera. Very, 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 very happy with this lens. So I shot the lens, uh, sorry, the image that I captured that I'm happy with, ISO, uh, ISO 3200 f1.4 13 second shutter speed, Kelvin temperature locked into 3800, very, very nice image. I'm going to show you this guy's images now, but I have done some post-production retouching on some of the stars, especially top right and top left hand corner. That's where the comma occurred. Enjoy this image. Right guys, there you have the image. You can see when I first put it up, I tried to focus on the top right and top left hand corner for you guys. You can see the massive issue with this lens at astrophotography late at night. In filming though, blown away. Filming that slow motion stuff of the fire, the man cooking, getting ready, it was just really, really good. And autofocus at night, I must say, actually blew my expectations away. Never thought it'd be that good. and that quick in autofocus at night. 1.4, absolutely beautiful. Really, really enjoy it. Guys, let me know in the comments below, what lens are you using for your Astro Work and Fuji film? I would love, love, love to hear what you guys are using. So many people use the Samyang F2 manual focus and for good reason. It's lightweight, it's really, really cheap and affordable and has absolutely banging image quality. But for me, it just won't fit in my camera bag so is it worth just chucking in the back of my bag and keeping it there for that rainy day? Well, not rainy day because it's actually starry night, let's say, and taking those images? Or is it worth selling and just getting this and retouching those images? Let me know what you're using below. If you're using other manufacturers, if you're using the 14mm from Sigma, the best lens out there probably for astrophotography, let me know what you guys are using. Or tag me at Matthew Sora Photography and show me some of the Astro work you guys are doing because I love when Astro is done just down to a T. It looks so, so good and so unique. I'd love to set a time lapse up here and do time lapse with the Milky Way moving over that guy's head, but that's me done. I'll see you guys next week, but for me in the morning 
for another beautiful location and plenty more places to see here in Egypt. If you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe and share. I appreciate it all. But for me now in the white desert, that is me done. Ciao.